Continuing our discussion of parallelograms and their properties, uh, we're going to do what are called coordinate proofs, and we've done a little bit of this before, but we were going to expand the idea and really use what we know about the coordinate plane in order to prove that uh, different quadrilaterals are parallelograms. And so, again, the, the key concepts that we're going to use when we're talking about the coordinate plane are things like slope midpoint and the distance formula. So those are three key calculations that we can do in order to prove something that is uh, is true using what we know about uh, the coordinate plane. And so I want to quickly, before we actually get into how do we figure out that quadrilaterals are parallelograms on a coordinate plane, I want to remind you about the key formulas that you're going to be able to use. So I have this, you know, the concepts that, that we're talking about. Um, you could be asked to use the distance formula. Right, and the distance formula is going to be helpful for f figuring out that certain lines are congruent to each other. So sides are the same length, diagonals are the same length. Any concept where we're trying to figure out that two lines are the same size, you can use the distance formula. And I'm providing the distance formula for you. Okay. Anytime we need to find a midpoint, or if the word bisect shows up, which remember bisect is really when bi uh, diagonals bisect each other, they're connecting each other uh, together at the midpoint. Right, so the, that would be an important midpoint concept. So anytime we, we involve midpoint or, bi or lines bisecting each other, we would use the midpoint formula. Right? And if we ever talk about parallel or perpendicular, and it doesn't matter what they are, whether they're sides or diagonals, we're going to use the slope formula. And if we can show that uh, two lines have the same slope, we can prove that they are parallel to each other. If we can show that two lines are, have opposite reciprocal slopes, we can show that they are perpendicular to each other. And so let's talk about the different ways that we could prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So if you take a look, we have a couple of different ways we could do it. The first one is we could use the definition of parallelogram. If I said, let's define parallelogram, what does that mean? The definition that we gave uh, when we started talking about parallelograms was that both, op both pairs of opposite sides should be parallel to each other. And so if you can prove to me, using what you know about slope, that opposite sides are parallel, both of them, then that's going to be enough to prove to me that this is a uh, parallelogram. Okay? Here's another way. If you can show me, using the property of parallelograms, that opposite sides should be congruent, okay, we could use the distance formula, and we can calculate how long all of the lines are, and as long as we can show that both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, then that's enough to show that this is a parallelogram. Okay? Here's a third way. If you show me that both diagonals bisect each other, which means calculate their midpoints and show me that they have the same midpoint, then that would be another way to show me that this is a parallel that these quadrilaterals are parallelograms, right? So there's a bunch of different ways we can do it using the definition and using some of the key properties that we use. So we're just going to go through and we're going to actually use all three of these on the same problem to prove that we have a parallelogram. So here's a picture of some quadrilateral. They said, here are four points, A, B, C, and D. They are the vertices of a parallelogram. Okay, and they're being nice enough to tell you that it's parallelogram here, but in some cases they might just say, of a quadrilateral, and then you would have to prove using the, these methods that they are, is in fact, parallelograms. Okay? So if I asked you to show me uh, using the slope method, using showing me that the opposite sides are parallel, what we're going to actually have to do is do four slope calculations. Okay? I have four sides here. I'm going to find the slope of AB. So I'm going to say from A to B, the slope is, well, A to B would be uh, y2 minus y1, 5 minus 3, over 3 minus 1. Okay? That looks like a slope of 2 over 2, which is 1. Okay? And then if I were to do its opposite side, opposite side to that is CD, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say from C to D, that would be negative 1 minus 1. Okay? And if I were to do the other one, 7 minus 9, well, that looks like negative 2 over negative 2, which, if you notice, has the same slope. So A, B, and C, D are opposite sides. They have the same slope, so I can say these are parallel to each other. However, be careful. If we're going to show this is true, it has to work for both pairs of opposite sides, which means I also need to show that AD, so let's do AD, okay, let's find its slope. I would say 7, I'm sorry, negative 1 minus 3, that would be my y value subtracted, over 7 minus 1. Well, that looks like negative 4 over 6, which I can reduce down to negative 2 over 3. Okay? In order for this to work, BC 
which is its opposite side, right? AD is traveling here, BC is on the opposite side. It would have to have the same slope as well. So I'm going to look at this and say, uh, from B to C, that would be 1 minus 5 over 9 minus 3, which if you notice, also negative 4 over 6, which reduces to negative 2 thirds. So I can say, using this method, just doing those four calculations, then yes, this is definitely a parallelogram because A and B and C and D, those are opposite sides and they are parallel because they have the same slope. AD and BD are also opposite sides and they have the same slope. So I can say by the definition, yes, this is a parallelogram. Both pairs of opposite sides are parallel to each other. Okay. Your, your other method is going to be, well, maybe I don't want to do all of those slope calculations. Maybe instead I'm going to do um, distance formula calculations. So you want to figure out that instead AB is equal to CD. That would use the property that opposite sides should be congruent. So let's try that out. So I'm going to do uh, the same type of calculations. I'm going to say okay, AB, the length of AB is equal to the square root of, and I'm going to do a little bit of shorthand work here just to save us some time. Uh, the, the formula says that I should do uh, y2 minus y1 squared, while y2 minus y1 is 5 minus 2, which is 2. So it's actually 2 squared, and on the bottom I'm also going to get a 2 squared. Okay, so again, just to save us some time, you can do these calculations longhand. This looks like 4 plus 4, which is 8. So it's the square root of 8. Okay, I'm not even going to bother simplifying the square root of 8. I don't care what it is in its simplest form. I just care that it's the value the square root of 8. So let's compare that to CD. Okay, so when I did my y2 minus y1 calculations on uh, CD, I did negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2 squared. So this is negative 2 squared. Okay, and 7 minus 9 was negative 2, so I also want to square that. Okay, and so if you notice, this is positive 4 plus positive 4, which is also the square root of 8. So I'm showing you that A, B, and C, D, which are opposite sides, have equal lengths. Again, I don't care what the decimal version is. I don't care that it's not reduced. I just care that they match. Okay? So let's do the same thing with AD and BD. Okay? So AD and B, yeah, AD and BD. Okay? So I'm going to say AD in this case is equal to if again, if I were to do the whole calculation, y2 minus y1 is -4, this would be -4 squared plus the x values would be 7 minus 1, which is 6 squared. Okay? So this looks like 16, 16 plus 36. 16 plus 36 is the square root of 52. Okay, let's check that with BD. Okay, so I'm going to do the exact same calculation. Okay, this should be BC. Okay, that's a C there. Okay, I knew there was something wrong. Okay, so I'm going to do the same calculation, and if you notice, it's going to exactly match because this also has a the difference between the y's is negative four squared. Okay, and the difference between the x's is also 6, which I'm going to square, which is also the square root of 52. So I'm proving to you that this is a parallelogram because both pairs of opposite sides have the same length, right? The, the top and the bottom are both the square root of 8. The left hand and the right hand side are both the square root of 52. They are, uh, both pairs of opposite sides are equal. So I have a parallelogram, okay? Third method. Show me that the diagonals bisect each other. So I'm going to take the diagonals. It's good to draw yourself a picture if you're given a problem that does not have a picture. The diagonal in this one goes from B to D. So I'm going to take 3, 5, okay, which is my B value. Let's bring that down. Okay, And I'm going to take neg a 7, negative 1, which is my D value. And my job is to show you that the midpoint of these two lines is the same as the midpoint as when I, uh, of the diagonal when I connect together A and C. So I'm going to say in this case 3 plus 7 over 2 comma 5 plus negative 1 over 2. Okay, So that's 10 over 2, which is 5. And this one is 4 over 2, which is 2. So I'm claiming that the midpoint of BD is this point 5 comma 2. If this is a parallelogram, then when I use A and C, which we'll go up and get those coordinates in a second, okay, that when I find the the A and C coordinates, when I find the midpoint of that diagonal, I should also get 5 comma 2. So if I were to go from A to C and draw that diagonal in, I better hit the same midpoint or these things are not bisecting each other. So A is 1 comma 3, so let's bring that down. 1, 3, okay, and C is 9 comma 1. Okay, so when I find the midpoint of these, I'm going to say 1 plus 9 over 2 comma 3 plus 1 over 2. Find the average of the x's and the average of the y's, and you know the midpoint. Well, that's 10 over 2, 5. This is 4 over 2, which is 2. 
So if you notice, the midpoint of BD is equal, is the same point as the midpoint of AC. And that shows that these two diagonals are bisecting each other. And that would be a way to prove to me that these uh, are parallel, that these this quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Okay, so let me stress one thing before we're done. These are three different methods that will get you to the same place. You in no way have to do all three of these methods. You can pick which one you prefer or look at the information and decide which one would be the easiest to use and just choose one of them. So you can show me that this is a parallelogram by using the definition and you're done. This is all the work that you have to do. You can show me that this is a parallelogram using the fact that opposite sides are congruent. If you do these four calculations, you are done. Okay? Or you can show me that the diagonals bisect each other by calculating the midpoint of each diagonals and showing me that they match each other. And if you do just this calculation, then you are done. You don't have to do all three. Just show me any one of these three properties uh, is true using what you know about coordinates and the coordinate plane. And you have proved to me that the parallelogram is, I'm sorry, that the quadrilateral is a parallelogram.